Good morning and welcome to Trans West Truck Trailer RV. I'm AC and I got a special guest today. This is Brian Roberts with Antero Adventure Motors. Thanks for having me. We are going to walk you guys through a couple different Antero products today. We've got a Pikes Peak and a Longs Peak. I've been getting a lot of questions on the Pikes Peak and so Brian's going to uh, kind of walk us through the main differences between the two different vans. Um, we'll start over here with the Longs Peak. And Brian, if you kind of just want to walk us through, you know, chassis, interior, that kind of stuff. Yeah, uh, so we've got a uh, 144 high roof, 4x4 chassis, obviously. These have the V6 diesel in them. Um, this is a, uh, what we call a plus model, uh, which is great because we're comparing apples to apples, really, as far as driver features go. Uh, we call it a plus model because it's got enhanced driver features with the 10 inch touchscreen and Distronic and uh, this, have, this doesn't have an automatic door, but some do. Um, but so, and, and this, uh, the Ford uh, is equivalent to that in its driver features. So it's good that we have both of these here today. Okay, uh, maybe let's start, uh, I'll pop the hood. We'll start under the hood and yep. work our way back. Sure. Now I noticed the flux capacitor is missing. What'd you guys do with that? We relocated that to the back of the coach. Um, it's a better spot for it because it stays it stays colder back there. Okay, so better performance. Exactly. I like, I like that. <laughs> I like that. So, again, a couple spots I always like to point out is I get phone calls. Where do I charge if I need a jump start? Here's your positive terminal right here. Your ground is right over here. You got your washer fluid readily accessible. Don't forget your blinker fluid. <laughs> and your def. And your def over there. A lot of times people ask, where's the def fluid? And that's, yep. that's where that goes. Just like all the Mercedes Springer vans, everything's really easy to access, really user friendly. Uh, if you can't find something in there, especially that with the relocated flux capacitor, give me a call. <laughs> I'll give you my number at the end. Got it? All right, let's go. Oh, maybe just walk us through uh, the main features in the in the interior here. Okay. So we've got, um, actually, a, we can start by saying the builds in the interiors you'll see when you see the Ford are nearly identical. Um, colors are the same. All the interior features are the same. All the power is the same. Um, we made them as near identical as possible. So we've got a, a, a galley area here with full drawer cabinets. This is actually something we can talk about uh, after we do this, but a 4.6 um, cubic foot refrigerator, a 700 watt microwave, um, the, the power panel, storage, uh, vertical pantry for flexible storage. Um, but something that we can talk about now, I guess, is because this is a 22, we have, uh, aside from this new porta potty here, which is, which is uh, a little smaller than the one we used to have. Uh, and this now locks into this smart track flooring anywhere you want to put it. So you've got uh, the ability to put it anywhere you want in the coach. Um, we have hidden back here, if you can see, our new uh, hot water tank. So this is a two and a half gallon Bosch hot water heater that we've installed into the system that provides hot water both here and at the rear shower. And we have a new actual actual shower handle feature in the back there. As far as uh, power and control on that, uh, you know, hot water, electric hot water generally can be very, it can consume a lot of battery. And we know that battery is important to conserve and use as little as possible in adventure vans. So what we've done is we've put this on a, um, a timer switch. So if you press and hold this, I think it's six seconds. The green light comes on, which means now you have power to the hot water heater. The hot water heater will take anywhere between 15 to 20 minutes to heat up to its full heat. And at 30 minutes, it stops running power to the heater. So you, can, you can't possibly walk away from this coach and continue to try to heat water and use your batteries. Um, that said, this tank is really 
uh, well insulated. I think it's a 97 or 98 percent. I don't know the exact number. I apologize of uh, efficiency rating. So I've heated this thing up at noon on a Monday and come back to it at noon on a Tuesday and washed my hands in hot water and it only heated one time. So it's very efficient. So that's a real, this is a cool feature. Yep. Um, so if I'm out having margaritas up in the mountains, just hanging out, yep. I can't take a nap and forget all about it and wake up to drain batteries, huh? Exactly, and the other part is if you've gone through, if you use the hot water that you have from that one heating cycle, you have to come here and physically press this button again to reheat it so you can have more hot water for the second person that wants to shower okay. or whatever you're doing with the hot water. But at least you know if this green is not on, you're not using your battery to heat it. Perfect. While we're talking about power, uh, I get a lot of folks ask me, how long can I run on full, fully charged batteries? If I'm up in the mountains away from nowhere, how long is that going to last me typically? It's a trick question. There are a lot of variables. <laughs> um, depends on how much you use the induction cooktop and the microwave. Uh, my wife and I have gone and parked in the middle of a field um, when full sun for, I think we were there for two and a half days. Okay. We were very cautious. We were campers. We didn't, we didn't live like we were in our house. So we heated water when we had to. We, we cooked some sausages. Um, but in that time, we used lights, induction cooktop, microwave, the radio or the the, the the Bluetooth system, which is here now, um, we never had to start the chassis. Okay. And when I think when I drove away, I think we had 20% of our battery left, oh, nice. um, which was plenty. Well, that brings me to this right here. I love how you guys oh, yeah. label everything. I mean, everything looks like it's really fuel efficient, yep. Yep. including the heater. Yeah, the heater. We use fuel fired heaters in both the diesel and the gasoline chassis. Um, and they do only consume uh, somewhere near a gallon of heat for every day that you use it. Okay. Um, and, you know, obviously you only really need it if it's cold out. Right. But we're in Colorado, so it depends on the day, right? Yeah, exactly. one, one day to the next. Yep. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about the uh, Bluetooth speakers in the back? Yeah, so the Bluetooth speaker is separate from the audio system in the chassis and you can pair this to your phone and run Pandora or whatever, or Spotify or whatever other music system you like to use, and it runs the speakers in the, in the rear door. Perfect. Yeah. Let's see here. Um, one other question I had somebody email me on was, what's this step for? All right, that's a step for shorter people, for height challenged, to get into the bed when the bed is up. Okay. There are times when it's a little too high to get into, and you know, you kind of, you know, if you jump, you're gonna hit your head. <laughs> if you're too tall. So using that to leverage up onto the bed is, is, is okay. the reason why that's there. Perfect. Yep. Uh, can't think of anything else that kind of stands out for yeah, me. Yeah, not really. You've got controls for your awning. You've got controls for your uh, scene light on the outside side here. You've got uh, the awning light switch and then the under cabinet or the under storage lights. So if you're accessing your gear at night and the bed is down, you can see everything. So we were talking earlier about the differences between the two vans. Um, yeah. How does the bed compare in this and the Ontario, the uh, Pikes Peak? We'll have to measure the Pikes Peak when we go over there. This bed is 76 wide okay. by 59, well, okay. 76 long by 59 wide. Okay. Um, I think when we get over to the Pikes Peak, we'll, we'll find it to be a little bit bigger okay. and better for taller people. While we're talking about that, let's, let's measure the, uh, the ceiling height in there because I know there's also, you know, the differences between these these two models really do, comes down to inches. So we are six foot one as a uh, as a clearance or as a head height interior here. Okay. So six foot one. When we go into the other one, we'll check that yeah. one out. The bed. Can you just pull down one side for me? Yeah. I, yeah. This is not like, everybody's seen these videos. I like to show sure. that off. I like pulling this side down too because. Not only is it half of the bed, but it's also um, our our table. It's we call this. I forget what we call this now. We call this the uh, the daydreamer bed system, which means you can use it during the day. You've got this basically bar height table that you can put 18 inch stools to use, folding 18 inch stools, and it's a perfect height. You can sit three adults across here to eat, 
you can put your computer and work during the day, um, but obviously this is the half of the bed at night as well. Okay. Thank you. Now maybe we can go around the back side and show the, the new features. So we've got the porta potty box. Yep. And then we've got the outdoor shower. Yeah. So we do have the the new, this is our generation two porta potty box. It's smaller, it's a little more durable, and it's a lot easier to use. Um, so it doesn't take up as much space for gear. We can also, we also have hardware now in this that locks it into this track. The Perfect. previous version did not have that. So you can lock it in and it won't fly around or move around when you're driving. And you guys went ahead and hung the shower head up here on the, on the rear door. We did, that's, yeah. That's really neat. Yep. And then you've got this new fixture here, which is single hand control. Let's make sure it's not on. Oh, sorry. Boink. It is. There's a little water in there. I think the, uh, the pump might be on right now. Okay. So single hand control, hot and cold, off as well. And then you do have your trickle on and off on the hand itself and then a spot to tuck it away while you're driving or if you want to get it out of your out of your hands and, yeah. and, and use it to to wash your hair and things like that underneath that you do have your air compressor nozzle which lives right back here and then you have controls yep there's your air compressor nozzle right there and then you have controls for that compressor a rear scene light the water pump control and again another switch for the under bed light so you can access it from back here if you're outside and getting to your things as far as towing this has 5,000 pounds towing 5,000 pound capacity yes okay this, and this step is standard okay i was going to ask some of the others don't have it and when you try to get in yep sure and as we're slip. talking about standard items the only thing that we don't include on any of these builds everything you see is included the AC on top, the rooftop AC, is the only option on this van. And that's because some people don't need an air conditioner. That's right. They don't want an air that's conditioner, right. right? All right. Well, maybe we can move on to the Pikes Peak and kind yeah. of talk a little bit about that one. Yeah. Do you have the uh, the tape measure? Tape measure? I'll measure? grab that. I wanted to show something that I noticed earlier. We can kind of zoom in here. In order to open the hood here, it's kind of tucked away and hidden under that spot right there. So I wanted to point that out just so that if you end up getting one, it doesn't take you an hour to figure that out. Fuel fill as well, as with all the other vans that I've done, it's gonna be right here. I got it. Oh, perfect. So this is a major difference between the two models. Long's Peak is diesel, Pike's Peak is gasoline. This is a V6 EcoBoost engine, um, somewhere near 300 horsepower. This has a lot of power. This, this thing really does move well. And because of that, since we're talking about towing recently, this has a 5,200 pound capacity towing, so it does have a higher capacity than the Mercedes. Oh, nice. And again, everything's really easy to access, all your fluids. Yep. No def on this one. Yeah. That's a trick question. It is. All right. We're building these in two colors. Uh, we're building it in this, which is uh, diffused silver metallic. And then we have a uh, graphite gray as okay. well. And they all come with the... Uh... They all come hood wrap. Okay. Yep. So, I imagine if you framed that right, you wouldn't see much difference between the interior on the... Long's Peak and on the Pike's Peak, and that's because they're all a lot of very the same parts. Um, although they fit very differently, but they are the same parts, same componentry. Um, lower step in height, which, you know, when we start to talk about differences in chassis, the Mercedes is a little more off road capable because it has a much higher ground clearance. This is a lower ground clearance, which translates to it's easier to get in and out of. Right. And you can do an off road 
lift, right? You can do a you can do a two and a half lift maybe on you this. You can do a two inch lift two without inch lift? binding these front axles. Okay. Yep. And there's some items. There's some uh, there's some aftermarket okay. availability on that. Perfect. Yeah. Um, go inside if you like. Um, I think the driver features we touched on. The big technology difference between the Ford, or at least the advantage with the Ford over the over the Sprinter, is this has um, Ford Connect, which is 4G and hotspot, so it's built in. Nice. Um, you'd have to add that to the Sprinter chassis. Okay, so that's good if you're working if on your work. If you're going to work in remote, yep, yep. Everything else, like you said, looks the same. What do we got height-wise in here? So the other one was 6.1, you said? Yep, the other one was 6.1. And this one, I think, is 6.3, but let's... Yep, oh, yeah. six three and a half here. So you do have a significant amount of head height difference. Which is good if you're seven foot tall like me. Yep, and I think we're gonna find when we put this bed down that the... Uh, that equates as well to the distance you have to sleep in. And we'll check that. Excuse my back. Yeah, we are 79 inches. Okay, so three inches longer. Three inches wider and yeah. two inches taller. Okay. Yeah. So that does come in handy if you're a taller yeah, person. if you're a little taller. Yeah. If you're 6'1", you'd probably be more comfortable in this van. Okay, that's good. That's definitely good to know. Yep. Um, Seat-wise, they all swivel around, right? All of the captain's yep. chairs swivel around in both they models. Do. They do. Uh, let's see, they all come with navigation. Yep. I noticed this one's got some auxiliary buttons down there. Uh, so you can add... We have not tied into those, but the, the end user could tie those into anything they wanted okay. to. Lights, exterior components. Integrated brake controller. Yeah, it like. has the integrated brake that's controller awesome. with the heavy-duty tra tra trailer trailer package. That's awesome. No, yeah, that's really good. All of these come standard with the awning. I know we didn't open it. It's a little windy today, so I'm not gonna right. I'm not gonna worry about opening up the awnings. Yep. But they do have LED lights, as you can see. Correct. Everything on the roof is standard. We've got 180 watts of solar. We've got the automatic awning. Um, and all, all the lighting all the way around is standard. Okay. The screens here? Screens are from Rolf. They okay. are also standard. And they also have a, uh, let me just show you how this works. Yeah. These have a, a magnetic step through. Okay. So when you are camping, you don't have to unzip and come out like you would a tent every time. You've got a full seal here, but you, this is a magnetic piece you can step through and then it reconnects. So you don't have to keep, so zipping, you don't have to keep zipping. zipping it up and down to get in and out. Well, I gotta tell you that when I rolled it down on the other one, I gotta climb up here. So you did have to climb up, right? <laughs> on the other one. This yeah, one, yeah, the this one I just reach lower. up and grab that so I can see what you're talking about as far as the, the lower entry step. Yeah. Uh, let's see, what else can we talk about here? We do do an off-road, we do do a, an, uh, an upgraded wheel. However, we stay with Ford spec tires. I'm just gonna roll this up. If somebody wanted one of these, um, what kind of time frame are we looking for? If somebody wanted one of these Pikes Peak? I think um, there's a chance you could have one in a month. Okay. And then I also know that I have a chassis that doesn't have a PO on it yet that, okay. that could be had in eight weeks. Okay, so if you want one of these vans here, uh, a month to two months is yep. a possibility. Yep. The uh, long speak that we just showed you guys that one is available um, so I'm just gonna grab my my contact info for you have any questions come in and Brian I want to thank you for coming out hanging out glad to be here Brian's not only our rep he's also a good friend and a golfing buddy of mine so uh, we're gonna be heading out here after a while to play some golf uh, if you have any questions, feel free to give me a call. You can talk or call me, text me, email me, whatever works best. Uh, like I said, if you want me to show you where that flux capacitor is, give me a call. Si hablo español, me pueden hablar al 720. 
276-4241. Thank you guys and we'll see you next week.